<clears throat> what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel now welcome back go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless your taste level is lacking and if that's the case girl you have plenty of options out here and plenty of platforms y'all my baby locks are so cute today like definitely spent a good 20 minutes in the mirror just loving them bella is partaking in a little snacky snack so if you hear some grunting snorting and a little chewing it'll subside in, in like a second i promise and look at blue one thing about these dogs baby they gonna make their presence known and speaking of them y'all i got them a kitty pool well it's not a kitty pool it's a puppy pool let me let me show y'all I got them a puppy pool and it was so cute. Like y'all know Blue loves to swim. He gives Michael Phelps anytime you put him in water, you know? Target had this cute dog pool on sale and like these little cooling vests. So yeah, Bella even had a time. It took a while to convince her to get into the pool, but there was a couple of times where she went back, like she was too short to get in herself, but she would go to the edge and look back like, hey, I need a lift and then we would lower her into the pool and it was so cute. She had a great time. All of them had a good time. And look who's back. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw my folks, you already know that he is back. The last time we saw Poppy, I was pulling him out of the pond after a Canadian goose had run up on him and knocked him into it. So yeah, Poppy's back. He and my sister just moved to Texas last week and they actually live like literally downstairs for me okay bella and poppy are getting along great they actually met for the first time last thanksgiving and they got along fine then so i wasn't really worried about them getting along but they were really enjoying each other's company and it's very cute all right so in today's case of i should have just left them but i stayed and killed them instead we have the case of melanie and william bill mcguire and this happened not too long ago so on may 5th of 2004 two fishermen who are out on a boating trip with their children children notice a dark green Kenneth Cole suitcase floating in the water. The fishermen fished the suitcase out of the water to open it expecting it to be someone's lost luggage. They have a few cute outfits, maybe a cute pair of shoes that are I guess salvageable. Something of value that would be salvageable inside of this bag. Now whatever is inside of this bag is wrapped very tightly in black trash bags. They rip apart these bags to further investigate and find a pair of male's legs carefully cut off right above the knee. At this point, they immediately close the bags and dial 911. Six days later on May 11th, a young college student who has volunteered to clean up litter from the beach is horrified when she stumbles across yet another dark green Kenneth Cole suitcase. Just like the fisherman she had gotten, a little curious as to what might be inside, opened it. But once she is hit with a very strong odor, she does not proceed. So she doesn't get to see anything, but by the smell of it, she can pretty much reasonably conclude that something is decomposing inside of the suitcase. She closes the suitcase immediately and calls for police who then come and retrieve it and send it off to a medical examiner's office. And inside of suitcase number two is the torso with the arms attached and a head of a male. And five days after this, a third suitcase matching the description of the previous two dark green Kenneth Cole is discovered. And inside of it is a male's thighs and pelvic region. Now, in addition to being dismembered, this person has also been shot several times. The condition of the head makes it impossible to identify just by looking at them. And photos of it would be just too horrific to release to the public. So they have a facial reconstruction sketch done and they use that to appeal to the public to see if anyone recognizes who this man is. Now to their luck, almost immediately a man calls in and identifies this as a friend of his, William McGuire, aka Bill, who lives in New Jersey, is a husband and a father of two sons, ages two and four. Now with this information, they are able to look up an old arrest record and positively identify him as being Bill. And now that they have identified the who, they set their sights on the why and the how did he end up in the Chesapeake Bay. Now, as with most cases, the first person that investigators are interested in speaking with is his spouse, 
Melanie McGuire. Born October 8th in 1972, Melanie had grown up in Bridgewood, New Jersey, and had gone to nursing school. Now, five years prior to this gruesome discovery, she had begun working at one of the U.S.'s largest fertility clinics as a nurse. And that same year, she had married her husband, Bill A. Navy veteran who was at the time working at the New Jersey Institute of Technology as a computer programmer. Now their relationship was going pretty well in the beginning. They have two sons together and according to Melanie, shortly after they tie the knot, that's when things begin to change. Bill develops a bit of a gambling problem and also a very violent temper, which leads the marriage into a very rocky territory. Now, she tells police when they speak to her that on the evening that he had gone missing, the two of them had had an argument that had unfortunately escalated as they typically did between the two of them. But on this particular night, he had gotten a bit more aggressive than he typically did with her, going so far as to try and choke her by stuffing a dryer sheet down her throat. Earlier that day, the two of them had closed on a brand new home and things were actually going really great before something set Bill off. In addition to the dryer sheet, he had also hit her a couple of times and she said he hit her so hard that had his fist been closed, she's sure he would have broken something. Now, at this point, she had run to hide in one of the bedrooms and she heard him yelling that basically he was out. He was done. He was leaving her and the kids and that she should tell the children that they don't even have a day. Effective immediately. He has no plans to ever see them again. Now, according to her, Bill has a gambling problem. And so she knows that he is just talking and figures that he has gone down to the casino to have himself a good old night and blow off some steam. When he failed to return to the house, she just figured that he was actually staying true to his word and that he was not coming back. Child, he didn't quit being a father and a husband like, like it was a, a nine to five. Bill's car had been located parked outside of the Flamingo Hotel. And when officers go to get the surveillance footage of the car being left there, what they find is Melanie parking the car there not Bill. Now, when she is confronted about this, she tells them that after their fight, she had gone to the casino looking for Bill. She had driven around a little bit. She located his car in the parking lot, just as she had suspected. He was down there blowing money fast. And she moved the car to the Flamingo Hotel to essentially play a prank on him. Now, this sounds very strange, especially if this person is someone who you were afraid of. You had just gotten into this fight with. Girl, why are you poking the bear? Why would you be doing something like this? It sounds so strange coming out of her mouth that even she acknowledges the fact that, okay, yeah, I know this does sound kind of strange, but I'm telling the truth. Now, the following day, she had gone to speak with the divorce attorney as well as filed for a restraining order against Bill. However, she does not report him missing to the police because she figured that, like I said, he had left. Like he told her he was going to. He was gone and never coming back. And she says, fast forward about a week, she is just as horrified as everyone else to now find that her husband's body has been turning up in suitcases from the Chesapeake Bay. Upon hearing the news of her husband's discovery, she had actually burst into tears and was very, very distraught. But despite her emotional response and her now very, very suspect story, the police officers that she's speaking with suspect that she somehow had something to do with whatever had happened to Bill. At this point, investigators decide to take a deep dive into what Miss Melanie has been up to in the weeks preceding her husband's discovery. And they find quite a few red flags. Now, apparently for quite some time now, Miss Melanie has been having an affair with a doctor that works at the clinic that she works at, Dr. Bradley Miller. And literally just two days before her husband had gone missing, she had purchased a gun in Philadelphia. She had also made an unspecified purchase of $9.95 at the store. And there are only two items in the entire store that are marked at their price. And one of them are the exact same bullets that were found. And Bill. At this point, investigators piece together what they believe to be the timeline and the motive. 
they believed that Miss Melanie here was ready to ride off into the sunset with her Dr. Boo Bradley Miller. And one evening, sedates shoots and dismembers her husband to get him out of the picture. In addition to the incriminating evidence that they had already found, they find out that Miss Melanie here had attempted to have two 90 cent easy tollway charges removed from her car. And it appears that Melanie here had come up with the story about pranking him and moving the car to cover her tracks since she wasn't successful in having those charges removed from her account. She had to have some reason why they would have her going through the tollways and coming back. Now, covering her tracks is, of course, not the reason for her trying to have those easy toll charges removed when they ask her, of course. She says that she knew what that would look like. And so she just didn't want to give anybody a reason to suspect her of anything or give her a hard time. And this whole business is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to evidence pointing to her being guilty. Inside of Bill's car, they find a prescription tranquilizer as well as two syringes. The doctor that had prescribed the tranquilizer, Bradley Miller. There is also a medical grade towel inside of one of the suitcases and these medical towels are the exact same as the ones that are stocked at the medical center where Melanie and her boyfriend Bradley work. Melanie's laptop is seized and in her internet search history, they find things like how to commit murder, how to purchase guns illegally, and also an internet search of undetectable poisons. Now, in addition to all of this, the brand of trash bags found with the body are the exact brand of trash bags used inside of the McGuire home. I got this big box of About Face Beauty blushes and I have been loving them. On June 5th of 2005, a little more than a year after Bill had been discovered, police go and arrest Melanie due to all of this incriminating evidence that they have. She is charged with first degree murder. The media picks it up and runs with it. They dub her the suitcase killer and her bond is set for $750,000, which she posts. After she is released, she receives additional charges and is brought right back down to the jail with a bail of $2.1 million. And again, she posts bail. Miss Thing said, my man is a doctor and he got it, okay? He got the money. The blush with this robe is so cute, oh my goodness. And of course the hair. Now, according to Melanie's lawyer, she could not have possibly committed this crime. One, it's not her personality, okay? It's just not her to do something like this. Two, despite all of the evidence they do have against her, what they don't have is any evidence or like DNA inside of the home saying that it happened at their home. There was no saw marks that her lawyer claimed had to have been somewhere if she used a power saw inside of their apartment and there was no blood splatter anywhere or large pools of blood found inside of their apartment. The lawyers also drive the point that the neighbors did not report any loud noises, any gunshot sounds, nor had they ever found this power saw that they were accusing her of using on her husband. Three long years after the discovery of Bill McGuire, Melanie McGuire's trial finally begins. The prosecution continues with their narrative that she was tired of her husband and was ready to run off into the sunset with her new man, Bradley Miller, and her husband stood in the way of that. The affair with Bradley had begun in 2002 while she was pregnant with her and her husband's second child and had continued well after Miss Miss Girl here was arrested. Bradley stands by her side during her trial. He takes the stand and declares her innocence, testifying that she had actually called him on the evening of April 28th after they had had the fight. And she had told him that they were having an okay day, that they had closed on the house. But then she had let him know that she did not want to be in the marriage anymore. And he responded very violently. The very next morning, she called Bradley again and told him that her husband had left. 
Right. Now, as for this prescription of tranquilizers that he had apparently written, he denies that this is his handwriting at all. He actually says that this is Melanie's handwriting. On April 23rd of 2007, Melanie McGuire's trial concludes and she is found guilty of murdering her husband, dismembering his body, packing the pieces into several suitcases, and tossing them into the Chesapeake Bay. Our lawyers asked that she receive the minimum, some kind of leniency, which was 30 years in prison. And on her sentencing day, she receives a whopping life sentence where she would have to serve at least 85% of her sentence before she is eligible for parole, meaning that Ms. Girl here will be the tender age of 102 at her parole hearing. Melanie has never apologized for Bill's death, as she says, she's not guilty. She maintains her innocence and says that she has nothing to apologize for because she didn't do it. She says that it is her belief that someone went after Bill, someone that he was gambling with, someone he owed money, and that this perpetrator is still out there on the loose and potentially dangerous. Now, as for the gun that she purchased two days before he was killed, she says that the whole bullet thing is it's basically a coincidence, girl. Like, don't pay attention to that part. She had actually only purchased this gun because her husband had been hounding her to purchase one for her protection. Now, in September of 2020, she sat down with the show 2020 and, again, said that she is innocent. And not only is she innocent, 16 years after this whole thing happened, she's still very hurt that people would believe that she would have done something like this. She admits that there were times that she wanted him gone and expressed that, but she never meant dead gone. After Melanie was hauled off to jail, custody was awarded to Bill's family, Bill McGuire's sister and her husband, and is being raised by them. Whether or not Melanie has a relationship with the boys at this point, I am unsure. If, if I was the adoptive mother child and his sister, they wouldn't have no kind of contact. I don't care. Um, but yeah, that pretty much concludes the case of Melanie and Bill McGuire. I mean, she really could have just left. Please let me know your thoughts down below. I know this video is a little shorter. Um, and I know y'all gonna let me have it, baby, in the comments. Please don't, don't do me too bad. I'd actually, my older sister had sent me the Natalia story and I had heard about it back when she was on Dr. Phil. Um, so I had started researching that and I was going to do a video on that because somebody else had requested it. And then again, my sister Melissa brought it to my attention. So I'm like, yeah, maybe I will do that because I see now that they are questioning whether or not, well, experts have said that they don't believe that Miss Girl was 22 and she probably wouldn't. I don't know. I don't think she was six either, but we'll get, we, we might get into that. It depends. We we might get into that next week. I just needed more time for that one. I was like, girl, I really need to deep dive, okay? It's a lot to unpack with Miss Natalie. It's Natalia. I call her Natalie. That's well, Natalia. So, yeah, I'll probably watch that documentary sometime over the weekend and, like, continue reading. Um, Like, continue reading dark brought documents that's what i was gonna say it's time for me to hit that little red button baby and stop stop the film and stop the camera y'all look at my little lock i tease this one because it's like in the edge you know my the little hair around my perimeter girl just grows straight and this one little lock it's hard to get it to lock so i took a little comb and teased it up because i ain't gonna hold you the ones around the edges that were like straight here i've been cutting them i've been cutting my hair i gotta stop that i'm like is it a stranger in my house, girl? What's going on? I heard something. And I mean, not even getting up to check. Shout out. This is my time to go, baby. Hello from the other side. I really don't have much else to say. I am filming this video. This It's Friday. Happy Friday. I think I'm going to get it to y'all the same day. That's the goal. I'm about to take Bella and Blue downstairs so I can edit un unbotheredly. It's not a word. Like I said, let me know your thoughts down below. Please do not leave without liking the video. Subscribe if you have not. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Bella, you really going in. Like at this point, I might as well just sit and wait. Are you done, Bella? Is it okay for me to proceed? So far, Bella and Poppy are getting along. Getting, uh, oh. So far, Bella and Poppy are getting along great. They actually met 
Not her coughing in the background, like, girl, please. I'm so ready for her to be done with this little snacky snack. I shouldn't have gave it to you. Child, and if you see some smoke, like, on screen somewhere, my apartment is not on fire, okay? The sage burning in the background. The open it expecting to, a volunteer who has volunteered. Bella, you going in on those little pig feet. I'm about to call my sister to her. Come get her niece and nephew, baby. Bella is making too much noise. <clears throat> now she closes the suitcase. Like, I'm really loving my hair today. And it's probably nice, cute on camera. But in real life, baby, the hair is gorgeous. Now I'm snoring in the back. Great. At this point, it is safe for investigators to conclude. At this point, Bella, please. I'm having a hard enough time. At this point, investigators decide. At this point, investigators, in addition to the incriminating evidence that they had already found, what found, they also found out that Miss blah, blah, blah. Child, just my goodness. Like, girl, how you gonna use the exact same brand of trash bags? Exactly, Blue. I hope these eyebrows match, baby, because that's all I got for them today. I'm not putting forth no more effort into these brows, baby.